PBS Kids. Banana, corn, and sweets. Bread, cheese, and meat. Food words all. You just can't beat them. Hey, stay tuned and watch us eat them. <laughs> On Between the Lions. Mmm, tasty. Physical imagery, it kind of counterpoints the surrealism Yay. of the... Oh, there's your mother! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, cool cats and kitties. <laughs> cats and kitties? Yeah. That's cool poetry jam talk. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Super sweet. As you know, all our poems today will be about food. <gasps> so that's why it's called a yummy poetry jam. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> our first poem will be read by a poet named... Theo. <laughs> oh, that's me, goodness gracious. <laughs> Let's give him a warm poetry jam welcome. This poem is all about a lamb chop. Oh. Oh. And it it's called... It's called... Wow. Is, um... A poem? Oh, I don't think so. Uh, maybe it's performance art. Brilliant. Oh. I didn't even get the title out. <laughs> That's okay, Theo. Yeah. Hey, maybe you can try again later, huh? Later? Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll go get another lamb chop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, speaking of food, here's a yummy poem for you. It's called Cheesy Breadville. Oh, it sounds yummy, too. Mm. Cheesy Breadville by Sonia Manzano. Illustrations by Hector Nestor Casamayor. In old Puerto Rico, a long time ago, there lived a poor farmer they called Senor Joe. Now, Joe was so poor, he had little to eat. To him, even moldy old cheese was a treat. So one holiday eve, with not much else to give, he wrapped up some cheese for his wife, Doña Viv. He just tied the bow on the big cheesy ball when he heard his wife's footsteps outside in the hall. As she entered the kitchen, Joe, taken aback, hid his gift just in time on the oven's top rack. Joe sighed with relief, then he hugged Viv and said, Que sueño. I'm sleepy. I'm going to bed. Well, the moment he left, Viv broke into a grin. Then she pulled from the cupboard a rusty old tin. Inside was some cornmeal she'd planned far ahead to use to bake Joe a surprise loaf of bread. Doña Viv was excited. Her timing was right. She could let the bread bake in the oven all night, which she did, because she wasn't the least bit aware that the cheese wrapped in paper was also in there. Viv and Joe slept like logs, but awoke the next morn to the stink of burnt paper, burnt cheese, and burnt corn. They ran toward the kitchen and, as you can guess, when they got there, they screamed. What, what a horrible mess. mess! The cheese was on fire, the bread belching smoke. What an unkindly sight for these kindly old folk. Que pasa? Joe shouted. 
That cheese was for you. My bread, wailed his wife, was a gift for you too. They doused out the fire using big water jugs. Then they both sat with sad, tearful looks on their mugs, till the smoke had died down and their crying had too. And then Viv said, We both did the best we could do. And we did it with love, Joe replied to his wife. It's the thought that counts, Viv. That's the meaning of life. Then they kissed one another, not saying a peep. And they stumbled to bed and went straight back to sleep. Now, don't think for a moment this story ends here. Because young Olga, an orphan, was strolling quite near. And because she was hungry, she snuck in and ate a small bite of the cheese goop and cried, This is great! Then she wolfed down some more and took off down the street, shouting, Nita, come try this incredible treat! The neighbors all tried some, and then, with a roar, they rushed mouths wide open to Joe and Viv's door. It's cheesy! They hollered. It's bready! It's tasty! Please make us some more, and we want it post hasty. Well, Viv and her husband awoke to this din and looked on, amazed, as the people poured in and surrounded the happy but overwhelmed pair, waving moolah, dinero, and checks in the air. Make more! They kept chanting. We need a new stash! Make more right now, and we'll pay you with cash! Te ayudo! I'll help you! Was Olga's reaction, and Viv said, Let's give her a piece of the action! And so this odd trio became renowned bakers, the Pueblo's most popular cheese and bread makers. Viv, Olga, and Joe gained both fortune and fame. And Cheesy Breadville was declared the town's name. The end. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great poem, Mama! It had lots of rhymes. Bakers, makers, roar, door, peep, sleep, air, pear, morn... Corn, what? I like rhymes. <sighs> oh, very good, Leona. Hey, uh, I'm ready oh. to try reading my poem again. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Okay, this poem is all about lamb chop. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, and uh, it, it, it's called... It's called mm, The Silence of the Lamb Chop. By me! Oh, I give up. Well, well you got oh. the title out that time, Daddy. Yeah, great title, Dad. Way to go. Oh, don't give up, Theo. I'm sure you can find a way to do it. Oh, I'm not so sure. Oh. Corn. O-R, or, O-R, horn, horse, fork, shorts. And now it's time for... Glaze word! Glaze word! Quaid here today at Blend Mart, where two brave knights in armor with shopping carts will charge together at high speed, make a word, and go shopping. Competing today, we have Sir shh, shh, shh. and on your right, Sir Orts. Orts. Blend on, shopping dudes. Orts. Orts. Shorts! 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 Excellent! That's Gawain's word for today. And this is Gawain said, don't be shy. I'll see you next time on... Gawain's word! Gawain's word! And now it's time for... Those Magnificent Monkey Cheerleaders! Ready?
Good word, good word. Horse. 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa, girl! <laughs> whoa! O-R. Or. Corn. I know how I'm going to be able to read my poem. Ooh, ooh. Uh, uh, hey, uh, I need your help. Ooh, ooh, me? Yeah, yeah, come on. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> ooh this is going to work. Oh, oh, I have a poem. I have a poem. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> you go. Okay. Look, look, see, see. Coming down the lane. Here comes Scott. Here comes Dot. Here comes Chicken Jane. That's not a poem. That's a song. Songs are poems, Lionel. Just set to music. <laughs> nah, nah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, 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 but, 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 but there's no food in it. It's supposed to be about food. Yes, there is. There's food in that Chicken Jane book over there. And now, fun with Chicken Jane. Today, Chicken Jane and the Tornado. Look, Scott, look. See the field of corn. Yes, Dot, yes. And see the tornado. Oh, Scott, see the corn. The corn is airborne. See Chicken Jane write the letters R, I, D, E. Er, I'd. Ride. H-O-R-S-E Or sh horse Ride the horse, Scott! Ride the horse! <coughs> look, Dot, look! Chicken Jane was airborne with the corn. Yes, Scott, we were not airborne with the corn. Thank you, Chicken Jane! <coughs> And now... Okay, folks, oh. uh, uh, ready? <laughs> <laughs> be strong, Theo. Ooh, right, right. Uh, be strong. The, the silence of the lamb chop. Uh, by me, Theo. Oh, lamb chop, quiet as can be. Tempting. Tempting. Tempting me! Ah! Mm, this is good. Sorry. Juicy little chop of lamb. Am I hungry? Yes, I am! The end. Yay! Oh, Theo! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey! Oh, God. Ah! Oh, God. <laughs> This is the announcer bunny saying, you're a food poet, I bet you know it, so show it! Stolen oh. smells. And there you go, sir. Thank you. As they say, the best things in life are free. Hmm, right. And checking a book out from the library is just that, absolutely free. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hmm, you're absolutely right, Mom. Reading is free. Mm -hmm. Playing outside is free. True. Oh, and listening to poetry is free? Mm -hmm. Or music? Or, right. or smelling a lamb chop? <gasps> smelling a lamb chop. <sighs> you know, that reminds me of a story, actually, about someone who kind of disagrees with you on that. Mm. It's right, oh, it's right here in front of me. <laughs> here we go. Stolen Smells, written and illustrated by Chimoyoy Roy Roy. Here we go. Okay. Once upon a time in India, there was a woman named Koyel who cooked the best sweets in all the world. I cook the best sweets in all the world. 
When Koyal cooked her sweets, the wonderful smells drifted into the streets, drawing people into her shop. And once they were there, they bought lots of sweets like jalebi, ladu, and gulab jamun. Yum! Mm, 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 mm. Koyel made lots and lots of money. Money, money, money! One day, Koyel saw a boy named Bijoy standing outside her sweet shop, enjoying the wonderful smells of her sweets. Mmm! Koyel waited for Bijoy to come in and buy something, but he started to walk away. Hey, little boy, where are you going? I'm going home. I have a soccer game to go to. Koyel was very annoyed at the boy. But you smelled my smells and did not buy any of my sweets. I'm not hungry, but thanks for the smells. Bye. Koyel was even more annoyed at the boy. Well, if you don't buy any sweets, then you must pay me for the smells. Pay for the smells? <laughs> that That's funny. <laughs> that's a good one. But Koyel was not joking, and she called the local police. The police? The police? No. Yes. The police arrested Bijoy and brought him before a judge. The judge asked Koyel and Bijoy to tell their sides of the story. Wow, there's no way the judge will think Koyel is right. Right? Well, maybe yes, and maybe no. <gasps> read, Mommy. Read, read, read. Okay. Please, please, please. The wise judge listened carefully to both sides of the story. Then she made her decision. Bijoy, Koyel made the sweets, so the smells of those sweets do indeed belong to her. You must pay for them. What? Yeah, yeah, you have to pay me. You have to pay me. The judge asked Bijoy to give her five rupees. But... I can't believe this. Koyel held her hands out greedily for the coins. Come to Mama. But the judge said, Koyel, in payment for the smells of your sweets, you will receive... The sound of money. The sound of money? The sound of money? That's what she said. You don't get the money, just the sound. The judge dropped the coins from one hand to the other. They made a clinking sound. Then the judge gave Bijoy his coins back. The sound of money, the sound of money. Oi! And to this day, the joy enjoys the smells of Koyel's sweets, which he pays for with the sound of money. The end. <laughs> oh, that was awesome! Yeah. Koyel was being greedy, and the judge knew it. Yep, smells don't cost a thing. So, cubs! Ta-da! Take the smell of these chops here. We can smell the sweet smell as long as we want. <sighs> no charge. <laughs> That's just the best. <laughs> yeah, delicious smells. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yes. But not very filling. No. <gasps> <gasps> Boy, oh why, oi, oh why, soy, oh I, soil, toil, oil. Desks and dinosaurs and the Dewey Decimal System.
Carts will charge together at high speed, make a word, and go shopping. Competing today, we have Sir T T <laughs> and on your right, Sir Oys. Oys. <laughs> Blend on, shopping dudes. Oys. 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 Toys. Excellent. That's Gawain's word for today. And this is Gawain saying, it's been a joy to be with you. Aw, see you next time on... Gawain's Word! Gawain's Word! O-Y. Oi. Boy. <sighs> you know, at first I didn't think I was gonna like that stolen smell story. I thought I was going to have an unfair ending. Mm. I don't like unfair endings. Oh, I don't like them even more than Lionel doesn't like them. Mm. Wait. I smell a story that has an unfair ending. But it's really, really funny and exciting. <gasps> where? Yeah, where is it? There! Flying off the shelf once again, it's the continuing daring and dangling Adventures of Cliffhanger! Today's adventure, number 493, Cliffhanger and the Soiled Oil Lamp. Cliffhanger, hanging from a cliff, and that's why he's called Cliffhanger. Excuse me, excuse me! We find Cliffhanger where we left him last, hanging from a cliff. Can't hold on much longer. Suddenly, Cliff notices a soiled oil lamp. Quickly, Cliff reaches into his backpack and extracts his trusty survival manual. Employing his expert decoding skills, Cliff begins to read. If you see a soiled oil lamp, pick it up, rub it, and a genie will come out. I am Roy, the genie of the soiled oil lamp, and I am here to grant you one wish. Oh boy! Okay, Roy, here's my wish. Get me off this cliff! Is it time for Cliff to rejoice at last? Is he finally poised to get off this cliff? As you wished, here is your own personal copy of Off This Cliff by Boyd Hoyle. But I don't want this book. I want you to get me off this cliff. Sorry, you only get one wish, and you used it to get the book. Well, see ya. Oi. And that's why he's called Cliffhanger. Can't hold on much longer. <laughs> <laughs> You yeah. didn't tell me it was going to be a cliffhanger book. <laughs> I'm sorry, Leona. Now this is an unfair ending. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> I think it's very fair. 